Don't let anyone take away your New Year's energy. This New Year's hype, ride the wave. But today I wanted to talk to you about a few things that you need to leave behind in order to use New Year's resolutions to your advantage and actually hit your goals this year. I remember going into, I want to say 2012, and I was so depressed, super unhappy, and I made a New Year's resolution that I was going to get fit. I went from size 12 to size 6 within three months. I went in hard and it was because of a New Year's resolution. January, I started. March, my body completely changed. By fall, I was a personal trainer. I really did want change. New Year's resolutions get a bad rap. But essentially, if you use them the right way and with the right energy, like you're excited to make a huge change, why not just ride the wave? So don't let anyone kill your New Year's resolutions, energy behind, motivation behind it, whether it dies down or not. Like as the year goes by, we will be talking about how to keep your goals in place, how to achieve your goals. But ultimately, you thinking about what is it that you want and actually continuing to move on, push forward. Like that's the biggest thing. If you want change, make that one of your goals. My dad actually taught me like resolutions are trash. And although I do truly believe that, Another side of me is compassionate because I was able to see a change with the resolution, but I actually took action. A few things that you need to leave behind in order to use New Year's resolutions to your advantage. We're going to start off with negative self-talk. We're leaving that behind. We're not doing that anymore. I suck. I this, I that. Why? I almost went into the year like that and I had to really sit down and take a look at why does it feel like I suck? What is it that I didn't achieve? I found out that I was attaching my accomplishments to different titles that I lacked or lost. And I wasn't even looking at my wins. That self-criticism, we're leaving that behind. Second one is toxic relationships. I've talked about this pretty much the entire year. Last year was probably the hardest thing I had to do because I love friends. I love to have friends. I love different type of friends, older, younger, and having to just cut that off. I think I feel it more because I'm older and I'm looking for stable friendships. I'm looking for people long term to be in my life. Having this imaginary life with certain people and then all of a sudden we're not friends. It was it was really hard, but it's so much harder to live with toxic relationships in your life. Don't worry, I'm not talking about my husband. I'm married. Okay, and he's amazing. I'm talking more about friendships and how they will bring you down because you're letting them. They are how they are. So separate yourself. Just do it. Like, who cares what they say? They're still going to say stuff. So let it go. Number three is fear of failure. I have heard from numerous amounts of people that this was probably the worst year ever for them. I had my worst year ever two years ago. This past year was a lot of healing, but I'm super compassionate for people that are literally going through their worst year ever. And this is going to be their healing year. So embrace it. Embrace the failure. Like, what did you not do well? Why? Probably the circumstances and the freaking economy and everything that's happening around us. But what else could you have done better? Do we need to learn how to manage our emotions better? Do we need to let go of toxic relationships and place new systems in our business? Maybe we need to adjust the way that we do business, the people that we work with, the type of customer that we get. So the fear of failure is great in order for us to continue getting better in our business. The next thing we are not bringing into the new year is clutter. I threw away a whole bunch of stuff. It just gives you so much just mind clutter. So I got rid of even like my books. It looks cool like to have a whole bunch of books in your library, but I don't even read a lot of them. I read maybe a few pages and they didn't feel like I wanted to continue reading it. So I just got rid of the ones that I'm not going to even attempt to read. Last year, I tried to mail them out and you're going to literally hate me. I never mailed them out. Anyways, which brings me to my next point, and that is we're going to stop procrastinating because we're going to say we're going to do it later. I get it. It's a habit. But if we said we're going to do something, let's put it on our calendar. Sometimes we can't just do it right away. Like five minutes, I'll do it. Sometimes we can and we put it off. So either do it on the moment that you said you were going to do it or put it in your calendar to do it. 
and keep your word with yourself. Which brings me to my next point. Excuses, we are not bringing that into the new year. It doesn't matter if your circumstances are XYZ, if your husband doesn't help you, if your kid is insane, if you have a nine to five, it doesn't matter. Because if you want it, you're going to do it. You just have to find out different ways to do it. Everyone has a circumstance. Everyone has somebody that's sick or maybe you're sick or you don't have the energy or seven million reasons why things might not work out for them. And people use it either as an excuse or as a reason to actually do it. So take responsibility and do it. No more. No more excuses. I cannot stand that. We're not doing that anymore. And we're also not bringing in the next one, which is comparison. Because you don't know what is behind closed doors. This past year was the biggest eye opener that I worked with a lot of business owners that looked successful. And this is not throwing shade to their business, but on social media, they look successful. And I come in and help them with whatever they ask me to help, whether that's course creation, business systems, social media, or whatever the case may be. Maybe they're not bringing in the leads, but on social, it looks like they are. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And you also don't know, let's say someone does blow up, They go from zero to a lot and they're making a lot of money. You don't know what they did the past 10 years and maybe they're catching their big break now. No more comparison because you don't know what's going on. Next is unnecessary stress. Sometimes we are bringing our own stress. Why are you taking on more things that you know you can't do? Why are you saying yes to things that you don't want to do? Why are you taking on discounts that you don't want to give? I was talking to my mom. I don't think she'll watch this though. But I told her the same thing. Like you take your own your own stress because you say yes to these things that you have to do right you have to do the response like it's your responsibility but then you take on these other things that they're not your responsibility you just feel compassionate and I get it I'm your daughter I have your same heart like I understand but there's no more I have to pick between my family now piece of my family the piece of myself and by family I mean husband and daughter I have to pick between them or everybody else let's stop stressing ourselves one other side of unnecessary stress is you stressing for things you can't control you can't control the weather you can't control how people are going to react you can't control all these things and you have these high expectations that it's like girl no you can only control what you do and the way that you act and the way that you respond to whatever's coming at you so we're not going to react with our emotional side we are going to manage our emotions and stop being stressed unnecessarily This is a quick little list, but I do want you to just be more aware. You need to save this video or share it to somebody because we need to be more aware. I don't know about you, but I'm in my 30s now and I don't have time to be stressed for no reason and like hang out with people that don't like me. Which brings me to my next point. Routines. Routines that you hate. If you are not a good 5 a.m. -er and you hate it, don't do it. If like 5 a.m. workouts are not your thing, don't do it. Figure out another way. Maybe you still do need to wake up at 5 a.m., but perhaps it's for something else. Maybe it's for personal development and maybe you can work in the morning and then your workout could be in the evening if that's going to be better for you. Is it going to take sacrifice? Absolutely. I'm not saying don't do things even though you have to do them because we have a business, we have families, we have to do things we don't like. But if a routine is just continuously killing and sucking your joy out, why are you doing it? Go work out at 9 a.m. if you can. If you can't, then you're going to have to do an evening workout at 6 p.m. It might be a little bit more full, but there's some give and take and you have the choice to create your dream life. Maybe you just absolutely hate cardio and walking on the treadmill. So go figure out how you can do an outdoor walk. Recently, I finally bought my walking pad. I should have bought it on Black Friday but I didn't. And now I get to walk as soon as I wake up. I've been wanting to do that right here in my home. I don't even have to wear pants if I don't want to. I'm excited for that. Keep me accountable. I'll give you a little uh, update once I get it. My next point, which is healthy habits. If you're not ready to dive full force into like gym workouts and all that stuff, find out something else that you can do. Maybe it's a daily walk truly think that you having this clear mind and the discipline to do that will continue to help you through your business and continuing to grow as a business owner, as a leader, as a creator. That's something my husband told me and I completely agree with him. He was just kind of like reflecting with me. When did I stop the joy that I had for fitness? I was a personal trainer. I was like, what happened? And me and him both came to the agreement that it was when my child was born. I could 
just mentally never come back. It was always like super high anxiety at the gym, even till this day. Like, who's looking at me? I can't do this, can't do that. Like, what? You know how to lift. You are a personal trainer. Although I have been very consistent at the gym this year, I just cannot fathom not feeling good anymore. I don't want that to be my excuse. I don't want it to be like, oh, I don't want to do this event because I don't have anything to wear. Oh, I don't want to show up on camera because my face is fat. Whatever excuse I have, like, that's not going to be an excuse anymore because my number one thing is going to be my health and I'm going to move no matter what. I'm going to have my walking pad and I'm excited. So you too, figure out what you're going to do this year for your health and stick to it, stick to it. And it doesn't matter if you miss one day, which brings me to my last point, actually, I have two more, which brings brings me to my next point, which is perfectionism. It doesn't matter if you mess up one time. It doesn't matter if your sales page has a typo. Launch it. And if someone calls you out on it, it's fine. You can fix it. It's fine if you only worked out three days this week. Next week, make it four or five. Don't get just like in this perfectionism mode because it doesn't matter. Nobody cares as much as you do. And another thing that we need to leave behind is not taking care of ourselves. Self-care is so important. And I'm not just saying like hair masks and facials and yes, do that. But what does self-care mean to you? My self-care is listening to podcasts, taking a walk in the summer, especially like summer walks are just my everything, or perhaps going out with a friend to go get a workout. Like those are my versions of self-care and putting my phone on do not disturb. If you need to get in touch with me you need to send me a text like I just called you because I'm not my phone does not ring. I cannot handle it and that's just my boundary if you prioritize your self-care and really nurture your physical your mental all of that your emotional you will be able to continue to really build your best self and create your best life i said it was the last one but i was lying we're gonna leave behind the lack of personal development i know that you have goals What personal development do you have in mind? What type of conferences are you going to go to? Books? I already bought two books. I know. I have a problem. What conference are you going to? I already have two booked for next year. I have one in April and I have one in September. So exciting. I'm going to be going to Grow Studio Live in Vegas. And then I'm going to go to the company that I partnered up with. They give us a bomb conference every single year. So I'm going to be going to Florida for that one. Now that is life changing for me. It changes everything and it gives me the fuel that I need and there's so many there's literally one this weekend I decided not to go but I'm gonna be watching it virtually I'm not saying over consume I'm not saying go in and buy every single course I'm saying research what you need to do and make time for your personal development and also if you lead a team for leadership development it's both ways I think that if you positively go into this year instead of what you lack what I'm gonna leave behind and what lesson I can take from all of these lacks that you had, you're going to be able to completely change your life. And I'm excited for you. I cannot wait to take you on my journey this year and really break down all of the lessons that I learned with you. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what we create. And I'll talk to you soon.